from the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. Welcome to this online worship service with First Presbyterian Church on this All Saints Day. Because it's All Saints Day, you may want to prepare your home worship space with a candle as we remember the saints in our lives that we have lost in the past year, as well as the saints in our midst and those saints who have gone before us. We are also celebrating the sacrament of communion later in the worship service, so please be sure to gather some bread and juice as we will take part in the Lord's Supper together. We would like to remind you to please sign our virtual friendship book after worship. You can find the link on our website or in the description of this video. And now let us do what we have purpose to do today, and that is worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. We give thanks for all the saints who from their labors rest. We gather to worship God who loves beyond life or death. With the cloud of witness, by the grace of Christ, in the presence of the Spirit, let us worship God. Let us pray. In all our weakness and strength, with our youth-filled spirits and aging bodies, we come to be your people, O God, strong in faith and eager with questions, singing our praise and whispering our prayers. We are here filled with saintly determination, yet mindful of our human limitations. You fashion us into your children, made strong in your endless love for us. We know ourselves to be yours, and we come to be your people as we worship you this day. Amen. Here we are at the fountain in our memorial garden, a creative and serene piece of artwork designed to look like a casket. It is a symbolic reminder of a passage in Romans where Paul writes, do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? 
Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. With this in mind, let us confess our sin together. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that often we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way that joined with those from ages past who have served you with faith, hope, and love, we may inherit the kingdom you promised in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Faithful God, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sanctify us by your word and spirit, so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water 
as a gift from the spring of water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it has bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And children, you can come a little closer now for a moment with Michael. Good morning. I'm so glad we have a few minutes together outside in our memorial garden, which is where we're leading worship from today. There are different parts of the garden, and I thought you might like to see them. We're standing at the fountain, which is an important part of our garden, which you also see a cross. All of our worship spaces have crosses. And you also see the black squares that are niches. And on those niches are names of dear church members who we want to remember when we come to the memorial garden. And I'd love to show you a couple other parts of the garden as well. Let's go for a little walk. At the west end of the Memorial Garden is a labyrinth. I'm actually standing on a labyrinth, which is an ancient spiritual practice that we can use when we pray. You'll notice there's a pattern made out of the bricks. And when you pray a labyrinth, you take time to walk and stop at different points and pray. And several people come to the Memorial Garden throughout the week to pray. And perhaps maybe you can come with your parents sometime as well and walk the labyrinth and pray. Let me show you one more feature of the garden. And in the very middle of the garden, you see beautiful flowers. And in fact, there are plants and flowers all throughout the garden. You'll also notice several benches and even words of scripture that are on the walls of the garden. So I hope you'll find a time to come with your family and come into the garden to remember church members that we loved so dearly, to walk a labyrinth, to sit, reflect, and pray. And let's pray now. Gracious God, thank you for the ways that you call us to be your church and that your love keeps us connected in all times and all places. Thank you for these children and for their life of faith as they witness to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All Saints Day is a tender touchstone and even more so this year. In a year racked with untold pain and suffering, we have this sacred space to breathe and grieve and name and claim. 
I don't know about you, but as I age, this holy day becomes more and more meaningful to me. I need the liminal space this day provides to remember the thin veil that separates the living and dying and the thick love of God that intimately holds us all together. As we inch closer to election day, we are well aware that there are so many things that divide us these days. The tension is high, the uncertainty is real, and in God's holy synchronicity, we have this day to exhale, to pause, to remember. And God meets us in our brokenness and lifts us into God's real presence with us. And oh, how we need this moment of respite and restoration. I recognize that rest may not be your first thought associated with All Saints Day. Maybe you associate sadness with thinking of those who have gone before us. And to be sure, Saints Days began as a way to mark the anniversaries of the death of martyrs, their birthdays as saints through the completion of their baptism. By the middle of the church's first millennium, there were so many martyrs that it was hard to give them all their due. And All Saints Day was established as an opportunity to honor the saints, remembered and forgotten, known and unknown. And that's been celebrated on or around November 1st since the 9th century. In our Presbyterian Reformed tradition, the emphasis of this day is on the ongoing sanctification of the whole people of God. While we may give thanks for the lives of particular luminaries of ages past, we also give glory to God for the ordinary holy lives of believers in this and every age. There is this connection that unites us to our common citizenship in God's realm. And so for me, this renewal and respite is because we rejoice in God's gift of unity. We rejoice for lives that reflected, mirrored the divine image. We rejoice that we are surrounded by a great company of saints who encourage us to keep running our race in full faithfulness and hope. See, in 2020, we really need this breather of all saints. I find that the first chapter of Colossians echoes this theme of encouragement and joy. And so during these first four weeks of November, we will look at a passage from each chapter in the book of Colossians and consider what it means to grow in the fullness of Christ. As we will not be able to cover every single verse, you can read the whole book on your own. It's only four chapters. And by the time Thanksgiving rolls around, we will have all read a book of the Bible verse by verse together. Presumably, Paul writes this letter from prison to the church in Colossae, which we now consider modern Turkey. He praises the leader, Epaphras, a minister in that church who helped his community grow and bear fruit. Paul prays for this community of new believers who were living through their own tumultuous time to be filled with wisdom and strength so that they can live lives pleasing to the Lord. Gosh, isn't that every parent's prayer? to be filled with wisdom and strength so that they can live lives pleasing to the Lord. He notes that love that they have for the saints in the church and praises them for the ways in which they are saintly. And I love this blessing he gives them in verses 11 and 12. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. I find it powerful. Maybe you jot that down as a blessing that you can pray for yourself, for your family, for your church for our world. It's a good prayer for our country right now too. Powerful strength, patient endurance, joyful gratitude. That sums up a lot of my prayers these days. I especially love the phrase saints in light. 
In fact, I can usually keep my personal emotions at bay as I officiate funerals and memorials for dear saints I have loved. But almost every time without exception, the words of the commendation bring a lump to my throat and a tear to my eye as I pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive them into your arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And so on this day, we take a moment of perspective in our busy, crazy, hurting world and our sometimes frantic and fearful existence. And we give ourselves permission to breathe. Remember the company of the saints in light, whose light kindles in us the desire to continue with powerful strength, patient endurance, joyful gratitude, so that we can live lives worthy of the Lord. Our finite lives are made to shine that glorious, radiant light. And we pause to remember those whose light shone brightly, those whose hearts love fiercely. Their witness continues on, and it continues to shape our lives. This All Saints Day slows us down to breathe and to grieve, to name and claim. We will read aloud in a moment saints from our church family who died in the last year. You can also name those in your lives and family whom you remember in the roll call list of the saints. Saying their names aloud recalls our ongoing relationship beyond death with those whose lives enriched our own and who now live in the fullness of resurrected life. We add to our prayers this day the 230,000 Americans and the million people around the globe who died of COVID-19. We add to our prayers people killed from self-harm and domestic violence, from hate crimes and tribal warfare. We add to our prayers people whose gatherings to memorialize was made difficult because of the pandemic, and we pray that they find spaces of healing. And then we'll gather at the table together and claim God's ever persistent mercy and goodness, a foretaste of God's kingdom, when as the writer of Revelation says, death will be no more. Yes, on this day, we need all of our senses engaged and awake in order to catch the attention of our overwhelmed hearts and our anxious minds. And so we hear the familiar notes of For All the Saints and the sound of a bell tolling to mark the lives of faithful servants. We see the light of a candle flickering to remember those who have gone on before us. And we see the beauty of this sacred garden. We smell the bread and we taste the cup that connects us to the heavenly saints of light who feast with us. And when we worshiped in person, it was the touch of the hand as we passed the peace, or as was our custom to hold hands during the prayer after communion, where we are joined to living saints who impact and enrich our lives. Maybe in addition to the elements of communion, you light a candle where you are right now, or you hold your own two hands together, or hold the hand of someone who is near to you. Feel the pulse and know that God is and will be with you and with those you love and with all those God calls us to love. In the tender beauty of this moment, God is healing all that is broken. Nothing is beyond God's redemption and love. God is giving witness to the sure and certain hope of the resurrection right now. And so today we gather in our memorial garden. We remember the countless saints who have marked this day in the church's life for thousands of years. We give thanks for people who help us live our lives of faith, for people whose strength and patience, whose endurance and joy inspires our own as we trust God to live lives worthy of the Lord. And we engage our whole self, all of our senses, in praise for God's love known in the saints and revealed in the faithfulness of God as we continue our Christian pilgrimage until we, too, join the company of the saints in light.
Amen. And now let us affirm our faith and our hope using the language of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of the ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place who in life and death have witnessed to your truth, we praise you, O God. For all your servants who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely, and died in faith, who are still shining lights in the world and inspirers of our faith, we praise you, O God. For those no longer remembered, who earnestly sought you in darkness, who held fast their faith in trial and served others, we praise you, O God. For those we have known and loved, who by their faithful obedience and steadfast hope have shown the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, we praise you, O God. We're especially thankful for those members of our own congregation we name before you now. Robert Atchison. Elizabeth Bean. Robert Brower. Nancy Carter. Jane Chapman. Ann Chapel. Margie Crawford. Lloyd Day. Anne Gilliland, Fisk Hanley II, Nancy Harrison, David Herfel, Anne Hungerford, Wallace Hutchison, Lomita Jenkins, Mark Jennings, Edward Kehoe, Vera Kendall, Fran Curlin, Daryl Noe, Jane Pickell, William Poles, Marilyn Ross, Joanne Sarsgaard, Lois Sinnott, Kay Stansberry, Emily Sullivan, George Sullivan, Dillis Walker, Bobby Wilson, Jeannie Wolf, Taylor Yoakum. Keep us grateful for their witness, O God, and like them, eager to follow in the way of Christ. Then at the last, bring us with them to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. For what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly? 
As we offer our gifts for the ongoing ministries of First Presbyterian, we continue to receive pledges for the 2021 ministry budget. If you have not yet done so, you may mail your pledge card to the church or pledge online at the link you see at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your faithful discipleship in these unprecedented times as we respond in gratitude for God's continued blessings. Now, let us give as people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. Let us pray. Generous God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us what it means to love. And you call us to follow your example, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Continue to write your law of love on our hearts. Give us an unwavering passion for justice and a tenacious faith that will not rest until the hungry are fed, the oppressed find relief, and the outsider finds a welcome. Amen. As we gather at the table on this All Saints, we remember that we gather together from north and south and east and west, and we also gather the church across the ages. We've remembered those dear to us today, and they gather with us at this table. We also remember the church around the globe, how we're all united in God's promise of Jesus Christ fully present with us as we take this bread and we take this cup. So friends, come, taste and see and know that indeed the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, of days and nights, of sinners and saints, of right and left, and everything between and beyond. We are grateful for your presence that abides in every corner of our living. From the beginning of time, you have created us for relationship with one another, with the earth, and with you. When we reject your call to community, choosing isolation over partnership, of brokenness over healing, you call us back again and again with words of grace and the promise of new life. Remembering that we are not alone at this table, we join our voices with all the saints whom you have called from all times and places who forever sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our host and our guest at this table. Through his birth, you took on flesh, affirming the goodness of our bodies and our world. Through his life, you took on suffering, sharing the truth of hope and desperation. Through his death, you took on death, revealing the depth of your love for us. And through his resurrection, you brought new creation, embodying the promise of life everlasting. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup, gifts of the earth through which you bless us, and we offer ourselves in your service. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, and upon your gifts, that we may taste your goodness and see your presence and demonstrate your unity. As we approach this election in our country, may your peace prevail and your grace heal deep divisions. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and number us among your saints. And as we gather at your table that stretches across earth and into heaven, let us be strengthened by the witness of your saints and supported by their fellowship so that we can run with perseverance the labyrinth of life set before us. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until that promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you in your table in glory. 
For it is in life and death that we belong to you, Alpha and Omega, and it is to you that we give all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. With all the saints, we pray your prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night of his arrest by the powers of empire, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the hope of liberation and the freely given gift of life to all creation and the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, beloved, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear God, help us to become grateful recipients of what has been given to us around this table. May your presence with us in this holy meal encourage us to follow you and trust you in this life. As we go from this place, make us attentive to the world of needs around us, and may our life's inspiration and gratitude be found in the most blessed Holy One of all, Christ our Lord, who is the head of the table and the head of our lives, this day and forever. Amen.
friends, I think the words from Colossians are a powerful benediction on this All Saints Sunday. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen.